everybody, James with Love My Parts, My Bridge Supply. Here we go, part seven of a 12 part series. Now we're talking about puppy care. So we've already been home for 24 hours and now we are gonna talk about what is a puppy that seems to be in great shape you don't have to worry about versus a puppy that needs some help or maybe is getting into some serious trouble and how, what are the treatments and what do you need to do to diagnose these things. Okay, so, um, let's just talk about some fundamental pieces of equipment that you should have. Our puppy care kit, which I keep on harping about, so apologize for that, but it's got all the things in there that you need to have as diagnostic tools and things to treat puppies and keep puppies happy. So here's number one, well, I don't know if it's number one, but this is a fundamental piece of equipment. So this comes the puppy care kit. It is a digital scale and it's accurate. You should be weighing your puppies every day and they should be gaining about half an ounce or about 15 grams every day so i'm going to put this on a little list of things to do weigh puppies you want to see half an ounce gain or more if you're not seeing a half an ounce gain by the way you will probably lose weight over the first 24 hours and then after that it should be gaining weight every day thereafter if you're not seeing a half an ounce gain in all the puppies, then you would question whether mum's milk is any good. If you're just seeing a puppy or two that's not gaining half an ounce, then those puppies may need some special treatment. Um, and typically you can see this happen, especially in small puppies, where you have a big litter, you've got one or two small puppies, maybe you've got you know Frenchies, you've got eight to 11 ounce puppies, eight of those and you've got a couple of them that weigh five ounces. Those are the ones that you've got to really watch out for. They need to be gaining weight and if they're not, what do you do? Well, the first thing to do on any puppy is if you think that a puppy is in trouble, stick your little pinky finger in its mouth and what you should feel is it should feel wet and warm and it should be suckling. If you see those three things, you're in great shape. If it's not warm, it needs to get an incubator to be warmed up. If it's not suckling, you are probably gonna to have to get it an incubator and give it a tube feed with some goat's milk, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. <clears throat> and if you're not sure, stick your finger into some of the other puppies' mouths and get a comparison, because a healthy, happy puppy will be quiet when it's sleeping. It won't be whining. You might whine a little bit when you pick it up, but it won't be whining. It'll be either nursing or sleeping and it'll have a nice rounded belly and a good nice red complexion to its lips and its tongue. That is a puppy that's doing well and it will have gained half an ounce every day. So weigh your puppies. All right, if you need to feed puppies because they're not getting half an ounce or you've got a puppy that needs some help, then the next piece of equipment to have is our portable incubator. So this thing could be taken to and from the vet, plugged into your car's cigarette lighter adapter, Plus also it runs off household current, it's temperature controlled. Uh, it doesn't dry the puppies out because the heat comes up through the floor. There is no moving parts in it. There's no fans or light bulbs to break. You can drop it and it will still work every time. So it's, it's almost indestructible. All right, um, cold puppies into the incubator. Puppies that are having trouble may need to be in an incubator anyway. How do you tube feed, how do you, how do you feed puppies? Well. Comes up, puppy care kit, goat's milk. Espelac, you can buy that at Walmart, place that, it's the same thing. Espelac is basically powdered goat's milk. But don't use cow's milk because they don't digest it very well and give them diarrhea. You can use whole goat's milk, you can use powdered goat's milk, you can use condensed goat's milk, all work fine. If you're using condensed, mix it 50-50 with water. And in all cases, you are gonna warm this up. You don't give a puppy, just like a human baby, you do not give a puppy anything cold. It needs to be relatively warm. Not as hot as hot coffee, but decidedly warm. Um, okay, so the most basic way of feeding a puppy is simply with a good old human silicone nipple, zero to three month old, or a preemie nipple bottle. It looks huge, but it's, it's not any bigger than, than your uh, Frenchies or your, your uh, mama's nipples. Works great. Um, what I find is, is the first time you introduce this to a puppy, it does not want to take the nipple. And you have to put your fingers at the side of its mouth, open its mouth up, or put your finger in there so it suckles on your finger and then get that thing slid in there. 
and he'll kind of go, go or like he doesn't really like it. Then all of a sudden I get a taste of milk and it goes to town on it. Um, don't hold the bottle up like this. Hold it so it's like this. You don't want to flood the puppy. Have a napkin ready. If you see milk coming out of its nose, suck that milk up with a, with a paper towel and then just go easy. You don't want to flood the puppy. If you hold the bottle up like this and milk is coming pouring out, then that is probably got too big a hole in it. You probably have to go to another nipple. If you've got a nipple that nothing will come out of, you can take a, a needle, a small needle, heat it up with a cigarette lighter and then put it into it there one time and it makes a nice hole that seals itself up properly, doesn't have ragged edges. Okay, so this is easy. The next thing is you've got a puppy that physically will not nurse. And what do you do in a situation like that? Well, that's when you use tube feeding. And I've got a whole video on both bottle and tube feeding, so I'm not going to go into this in any great detail. People get worried they're going to have problems, they're going to put it in the lungs. It's very easy to do. Basically what you do is, is you put the bottom of the tube on the puppy, bottom of the puppy's ribs, measure all the way up to its mouth, and then put a little black mark with a magic marker. So you know when you've got this in far enough into the puppy, so you know it's in the stomach and not in the lung. And you're gonna feed, in all these cases, about 1 30th of the puppy's weight every three hours. So that happens to work out. So now we're gonna talk about feeding. So feeding, you're gonna feed 1 30th of the body weight every three hours. And that works out, by the way, that a 10 ounce puppy gets 10 cc's. A five ounce puppy gets five cc's because there is about 30 grams an ounce. It's actually 28 grams in an ounce. So when you decide to do this, well, if you've got a puppy that has a sunken tummy, that puppy's not got any milk in it. If you've got a puppy with a big expanded puppy belly, it probably doesn't need any milk. So don't overfeed. And if you're going to tube feed the very first time, back it off a little bit. If, you, if it's an eight ounce puppy that would get eight cc's, give it six the first time. If you see, push the last part in slowly. And if you see any milk coming out of its mouth or a nose, stop immediately. So you don't want to over flood a puppy. If you do over flood a puppy, you probably get away with it, but you don't want to do that continuously. Okay, so let's see, where are we now? Um, let me look at my notes. It's always a good way to do this. What I do this is, 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 is. Um, well, um, cleft palates, by the way. If you have a puppy, I mean, you should have checked this during the birth, but if you have a puppy with a cleft palate where they look up in its mouth with a flashlight and you see there's an opening all the way in the top of its mouth, that's a cleft palate. That puppy's in trouble. You're probably not going to get that puppy to survive. That puppy will have to be tube fed. And I think we mentioned this briefly on the the previous video but cleft palate puppies they're going to be in trouble and my experience of this has been horrible unless it's just a cleft where you've just got a hair lip that's a, if it's just a compromised in the teeth and the gum and the lip those puppies will be fine they can suckle okay and that's a cosmetic thing that can be fixed later but a puppy that has a cleft palate in my experience with this is you just have to let those ones go other people will say otherwise okay um, mum doesn't have any milk. Yes, this can happen when mum doesn't have any milk for the first 24 hours. In those situations, if she's got a little bit of milk, put the puppies on her anyway, because they get some colostrum. The very act of them nursing on mum can help bring the milk in. Um, but either way, you're gonna have to supplement with the goat's milk, with either tube feeding or probably bottle feeding. Uh, baiting puppy. Oh, let's talk about loose bowels. So you've got a puppy that's puppies that have got really loose bowels, a lot of diarrhea, what do you do? I don't like giving medications to puppies that are in that zero to seven day old mark. One thing that you can absolutely do very, very safely is, this is for a loose stool, is to give canned pumpkin. Canned pumpkin. Don't give it to mum. Give it to the puppy. Just put some on your finger, put it in his mouth. Pan cum pu I can't say it. Canned pumpkin. You know, it's very fibrous, so it adds bulk to the stool, and it can help uh, solidify up a, a liquid stool. If you've got liquid stools, the thing that concerns me most, if it continues on, is that you can get a puppy that can be dehydrated. And that can also be a problem when you're 
tube and um, feeding by hand because you don't have enough liquid with the goat's milk. You're not making it liquidy enough. So watch out for that. If you get a puppy that really gets in trouble, you can get, um, you know, you can get a puppy that gets a hardened stool and can't poop. What do you do about that? So the answer on that one is if they've got hard, you know, not pooping, no poop, no poop, then get an enema. And you can give them an enema with nothing more than some warm water with a dash of uh, dishwasher soap in it. People say, what kind of dishwashing soap should it be? It doesn't matter, Dawn, whatever. Just a little dash of dishwashing soap in a, in a nice cup of warm water, suck it up into a syringe and just gently blow it into the puppy's butt. And you can do that every three hours and see if you can get the puppy going that way. So no poop, loose stool, canned pumpkin, no poop, and give them an enema. What's number five? What's number five? Um, all right, so puppies that are, well, we recommend that you use our heated whelping system because there's a safe place for puppies under the pig rail where there's heat and they keep nice and warm. If you have a cold puppy, what do you do? You've got to get that puppy warmed up. If you put your finger in the mouth and the mouth of a puppy is very lethargic, it's not moving, it doesn't want us to nurse, it's cold, you've got to get that puppy warmed up. Of course, one solution is, is the incubator that we already showed you. The other solution is, is that you do something yourself. So you can go get a heating pad, you can put it in a box with some towels and put the puppy in with that. The problem with heating pads is, number one, they're not regulated, so don't get your puppy too hot. Uh, and you can tell if a puppy's getting too hot in either an incubator or your homemade box because its mouth will be open and have its tongue and it'll be panting like this. That's a puppy that's got too hot. Um, a puppy that uh, uh, is very sweaty, you probably don't have enough airflow in the, in the whatever you're using, either the incubator or the box. It has a sweaty, clammy skin. The, it's breathing out moisture and the, you're getting humidity going up. Um, Yeah, heating pads. Be aware of the fact that the majority of heating pads, well, I think these days, all the heating pads that you buy for humans have an automatic shut off on them. And they are automatically gonna shut off after like four hours. So this can get you in real trouble because you go to bed, you've got a puppy that you think you've got getting somewhere with it, it's in, a, it's in on a heating pad in a box, and then the heat pad turns off four hours later in the middle of the night and you wake up in the morning and the puppy's cold and dead. So watch out for that one, it's not a good thing. Um, okay, fading puppy syndrome. So this is one that the diagnosis is fading puppy syndrome. What does that mean? It means we don't know what the heck is wrong, but we think the puppy's in trouble and you've got to do something because if you don't, the puppy's going to die. So fading puppy syndrome typically is a puppy, first off, is, is, it's very likely to happen that puppies that have been C-sectioned too early. They don't have hair on their faces, their lungs have not developed properly, they don't do the transition from being in mum to being outside in the air. Those puppies get in trouble typically about 48 hours after they've been born. And the symptoms are puppies stop nursing, get lethargic, and maybe making this what we call a death cry. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of taking short breaths, consistent. They're taking very quick breaths, short, sharp breaths, about once every five seconds, and they're making a squeak with it as well. <laughs> not a very good interpretation of it, but it's not when you hear it, it's not what you want to hear. What do you do in a situation like that? Get the puppy into an incubator, get some oxygen on the puppy. So the solution for this one is oxygen, O2. Get an oxygen. Buy, and I did a whole video here recently on oxygen concentrators. Get yourself an oxygen concentrator. You can go get oxygen bottles. The problem with this is you have to have a, a prescription for oxygen. If you had an oxy, oxyacetylene tank for welding, you could probably use the oxygen. I've done that before. It doesn't have the right kind of a regulator on it, but you could just slowly bleed some air. Be careful, pure oxygen, it, it will catch things on fire because it's a, an oxidizer. So be careful when you start messing around with an oxygen bottle. Don't really recommend that. Get on Craigslist, find a used oxygen concentrator. Um, 
And I, just go check out the video because I don't want to go into details of how you check it out. By the way, we are right now in negotiations that we will have auction concentrators on our website shortly. I'm coming up with hopefully something that's nice and small and portable that will do the job for not a huge amount of money. Um, but yeah, a puppy that's in trouble, absolutely. Don't start feeding a puppy that's in trouble. Get it warmed up first. Get it some oxygen, especially if it's not very pink. It definitely needs oxygen. Without oxygen, that puppy probably not going to make it. Uh, I think we're probably okay. Let's talk about um, let's talk about um, common puppy problems um, that you are likely to encounter, and that is a giardia. Uh, coccidia, worms, and hopefully not parvo. Okay, so let's just go through. These are common. This one's not common. These two are very. These these are very common. So let's just go out of order. Go to worms. You should be worming your puppies at every. Uh, Two weeks, so two and four weeks. You use Nemex two or um, um, God, I can't think of the name of the silly stuff. Uh, Payomate. Um, mm, I'll find a picture I would put up on the video. Anyway, every two weeks. If you know you've got worms, you can do it earlier. You should be worming mum too with Safeguard. So I recommend you use Safeguard. Fender Benders or Safeguard. Use that six weeks and onwards and you can treat mum right off the bat especially if you know there's worms present in fact there's a good argument to start treating mum before the birth with safeguard giardia we sell a test kit for giardia where you take a little bit of their poop put it into a little buffer solution and then take a little pipette and put it into a little card and it then shows you whether the giardia is present five minutes later you know if you've got giardia present you treat this with metron dissolve metron Dissolve. It's a tablet. It's an antibiotic tablet for about eight days. If they've got co and by the way, this one here you have to do a flotation to see the coccidia parasite. This one you treat with Albon, and you can pre-treat. And what we do is we give all of our puppies starting about ten days. And I'm going to spell this wrong. Tol Tolprazil, I think is the name of it. It's a horse medication. Worms, you're going to treat with Nemex 2. We just talked about that. Or Parental. Parental Paramate, that's the name of it. Parental Paramate. Uh, we do sell a test kits for Parvo. Again, uh, you're going to have to see that is just a poop test, so it's very easy to do. Look, if you've got Parvo, you've got big problems. And so um, I, I've done videos on Parvo. I don't want to go into this. It, you know, unusual thing to happen. I think the important thing here is quarantine every puppy and mum away from anything else for the first you know till they leave we don't let i mean if somebody comes by and kids want to come by and play with puppies fine under our supervision but they're going to wash their hands first we don't remember that puppies don't get their first shots we'll talk about that here in a second do not get their first shots until they are six weeks old and then every three weeks thereafter so Six, nine, and 12 weeks, they're gonna get shots. Very, very important they get their shots on time and you spread these shots apart the correct amount, otherwise they're not effective. And remember that even if you've given your first shot, your dog does not have immunity until it's had a whole course of shots and it's probably four months old or older before it's got a decent amount of immunity. And those puppies should not be exposed to anything else. I would not take a puppy into PetSmart. I see people who take a little puppy in their hands into PetSmart. I mean, they're very proud of their puppy. I understand that. Not a good place for a puppy to be because there's sick dogs there. Um, I think that that is uh, probably all that I can think of. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, all right. Puppy care. Out of the way. Next one is talking about mum and problems with mums. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. 
any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.